So there's another way that we can graphically represent activation energy, and that's by using these energy profiles or energy diagrams. On the y-axis, we have energy. So the height where the reactants or the products are placed or, or the activation energy, that height tells us how much energy. Where on the y, I'm sorry, on the x-axis, we get time or the progression of the reaction, something like that. So in the very beginning of the reaction, so early on the x-axis, we place the reactants and it, they have some amount of energy. Here we don't have a number, so we don't know how much, but we do know that at the end, when we have products, that those products have more energy, right? Because they're higher on that y-axis. But, but between reactants and products, our energy has to change, right? So in order for this reaction to happen, we have to get, we have to have this much energy. This is the activation energy, the top of that hump, from the amount of energy that the reactants just naturally have to the amount of energy they need, this amount, that's the activation energy. This is the energy it takes to break bonds. We'll talk about that more in another unit. But that's what's happening. Once those bonds are broken, new bonds can form and that releases energy so the the energy comes back down. But this amount of energy right here is the activation energy. Here's where it gets really interesting. Remember how we talked about mechanisms and that some reactions have more than one step. In that case, then we're going to get more than one activation energy. So here's one activation energy. But then, so that was the first little step, but then we get another activation energy for the second step here. And if we had a third step, we would get a third hump. We can also tell which step um, is the slow step based on this activation energy, right? The, um, the slow step is always going to have the greatest activation energy. That's what makes it slow is that it ha there's a big activation energy. So only a few of the collisions are going to be effective enough to get over that activation energy hump. This one, it may be a little bit difficult to compare those and see which one's bigger, and which one's smaller, but because um, they seem pretty close. But this one, it's very clear, right? Here's activation energy one and here's activation energy two. This is clearly greater. So this is clearly the slow step. So this is the, also the rate limiting step. If we can speed that step up, then we can speed the whole reaction up. Speeding this um, step up is not going to do as much good because that's not what's slowing us down in the first place. So here's where catalyst can come in. Catalyst can lower the activation energy. So if we look here, right, we looked at them before where we had, um, a Maxwell-Boltzmann graph, right? So we had the number of collisions and then we had some kind of temperature or energy right here. And we had some sort of graph like this and here's the activation energy, right? And so with a catalyst, we would lower that activation energy. On a energy diagram or an energy profile, we're gonna show that because the catalyzed reaction is going to have a lower hump there. Right, so this tall hump, this is no catalyst. And this short hump is with a catalyst. And it shows that we just need less energy with the catalyst. So the activation energy, sorry, the activation energy with catalyst is less than the activation energy that we need without a catalyst, right? Same thing here. Here, notice that we've got a whole new mechanism. When we catalyze the reaction, we actually get a two-step situation, but both of those have smaller activation energies than the uncatalyzed reaction that we originally had. So that's how that speeds that up. It could even add a third step if that's how the reaction happens, right? Or maybe even a fourth step here, it looks like four. So here we've got one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, but each of those have a much smaller activation energy than our original activation, right? Here's our activation 
originally, but with a catalyst, we have four steps, right? So here is the activation energy for that first step. Here is the activation energy for that second step, for that third step. And then this one, look how tiny that activation energy is. It's almost non-existent. So let's look at these questions. Here we have two graphs and we're just being asked which one is catalyzed. We can tell they're the same reactant or we can tell they could be the same reaction because the reactants have the same amount of energy, right? Just above five. The products have just about 10 uh, kilojoules of energy. So that could be the same reaction, but look how big this activation energy is compared to this activation energy. This activation energy is much smaller, so therefore it's um, likely to be the one that's catalyzed. It could be two different reactions, but since we're being told that it's the same one, one just has a catalyst. Okay, so here's another example. We've got the same thing. We've got the reactants and the products in the same place on both graphs, right? Um, we can tell that there are one, two steps, one, two steps, and that this is the rate limiting or slow step, right? And that this is our catalyzed reaction. And that's because this activation energy here is very, very big. We go from 10 all the way up to about 90, but here we're going from 10 just up to 80, right? So here, this EA is about 80 kilojoules, right? From 10 to 90. Whereas this here, it's about 70 kilojoules. So we've lowered that activation energy. And that tells us that this was probably catalyzed. That second step has a much lower activation energy, right? Just that amount. So one last quick example. Here we're asked to use the graph to figure out what the slow step is. These steps are going to be given in order. So in other words, this is the first step. This is the second step. This is our activation energy for the first step. And this is our activation energy for the second step. Since the first step has much bigger activation energy, it's going to be the slow step, the rate limiting step. If we need justification for that, that's what we would say because it has the greater activation energy.